With the battle against the draft won and the creation of an all-volunteer force a reality, Milton continues to press home his argument for minimum government and individual freedom. He could not know that years earlier and 8,000 miles away, seeds of the most public clash in his life had already been sown. Between 1955 and 1964, graduate students from Santiago's prestigious Catholic University had received scholarships to study economics at the University of Chicago. Most of the students developed ideas on free markets and freedom similar to those of Milton Friedman and others at the university. They became known as the Chicago Boys. In 1970, with the support of Cuba's Fidel Castro, Chile elects the first communist president in the Western world. Salvador Allende immediately nationalizes basic industries and controls prices and wages. The Chicago boys remain quietly in the background. One of them is Rolf Luders, who earned his PhD with Milton. Under uh, Allende, uh, the rate of increase in prices uh, annualized uh, of the month of September 73 was 1,000 percent, 1,000 percent. There are food shortages and strikes. The basis of the economy is copper, and the miners strike dozens of times in just two years. The banging of pots and pans is the sound of a revolution in the making. On September 11, 1973, General Augusto Pinochet leads a military coup against Allende. It is covertly supported by the United States. Pinochet and his generals bomb the presidential palace. Allende is either murdered or commits suicide. The Chilean economy continues to decline. In time, Pinochet begins to listen to the Chicago boys as they offer their proposal for economic recovery. In the midst of the turmoil, Milton Friedman accepts an invitation from a local foundation to speak in Santiago about economic freedom. And he said, there's one condition for me to talk to the press, that I can say whatever I want to say. And, and I said, sure, why don't you do it? And what, what do you want to say? And, and he said, well, I want to talk about, you know, the benefits of a free economy and so on. But I also want to say uh, that a, a free economy has to be accompanied by a, a, a free democratic elections and a free government. I get complete con la ley. And I said, well, maybe Pinochet will not like that very much. And he said, well, that's too bad, you know. <laughs> As I recall, Milton Friedman said uh, opening the economy up to international trade was a key element of any economic reform. Freeing prices was absolutely correct. Getting rid of all these regulations which inhibited entrepreneurships were great. It was a brief meeting, maybe half an hour or so, or 45 minutes, and uh, that was it. No. And so Milton Friedman publicly and privately agrees with the Chicago boys that a relatively short but painful shock treatment is needed to save Chile from the disaster of continued inflation. A large groups of Chileans paid a high price for the change of system. This meant uh, low incomes, meant high unemployment, meant, uh, meant bankruptcies. You cannot have a free economy without political freedom. And if you have political freedom, you need economic freedom to preserve uh, political freedom. In December 1976, Milton arrives in Stockholm to accept the Nobel Prize in Economics. The news of his trip to Chile and his conversation with Augusto Pinochet has preceded him. From the time we have landed in Sweden, we had 24-hour police protection. There was this demonstration 
of about 5,000 people in front of a Nobel ceremony place. In order to go from the one place to the other, we had to go out of a back door. I don't, you know, you people have such a distorted idea of what went on. Let me tell you some facts. Number one, I was offered two honorary degrees by universities in Chile before I went down. I refused to take them because those universities were being supported in part by public funds and I did not want to appear in any way to provide any support to the political system in Chile. I'm not a representative of Chile. I'm not an advisor to Chile. I have no commitments to the government of Chile. I now turn to you, Professor Milton Friedman. The young man induced his father to pass the ticket on to him. And he came to the ceremony with the express purpose of making a disturbance. I am very sorry for this incident. It could have been worse. <laughs> the Royal Swedish Academy of Sciences asks you to step forward and receive from the hand of His Majesty the 1976 Nobel Memorial Prize. Let me emphasize that the Swedish people were wonderful. There were a very large number of people who came up to us and apologized for what had happened. Now, some 30 years later, Chile is a far different place. Although the scars of the past are etched in stone at Santiago's Monument to the Disappeared. For the majority of its citizens, modern Chile has been called an economic miracle. In one of the fastest growing economies in Latin America, Chileans are more affluent than at any time in their history. That the more socialistic governments of the early 21st century have reaffirmed the free market reforms of the 1970s and 80s would seem to be a second economic miracle. These shoppers live in a society of single-digit inflation and relatively low unemployment. Chile has one of the highest literacy rates in Latin America. Record housing starts reflect a solid middle class, and the quality of life in suburban neighborhoods like this one rivals that of North America or Europe. Chile is one of the world's major exporters of fruits and vegetables, especially during the Northern Hemisphere's winter months. Today, Chile is the second largest exporter of fresh salmon in the world. And its award-winning wine industry has become an international success. <laughs> <laughs> 